Hey guys, on today's episode, I'm working on a 1991 Ram Charger with a full mural on it that is covered in mold and dirt. We're gonna power wash it and get it all cleaned up. The inside is completely covered in junk and we're gonna vacuum that out, shampoo it. It's gonna look amazing. Now the backstory is my buddy Charles purchased this vehicle for $600 in North Carolina. It had been sitting in the woods for nine years. He drove it up here and he's gonna take it from here all the way out to California. It's gonna be a great story. He's gonna come in at the end of the video, so make sure you stay tuned for that. That and a whole lot more coming up on this episode of Drive and protect. Step number one is to power wash the years of dirt, mold, and lichen off the paint. found it in uh, Roanoke Rapids, North Carolina. It had been sitting in the ladies' backyard since like 2011, 2012. Hasn't been driven since then. She was, she was missing the, the title to it and um, the, you know, the ignition was broken in it. So had four flat tires buried in the mud. I mean, I had to dig this car out of the mud in order to get it up on the trailer for, for us to tow it home. But we ended up having to do just about everything. I mean, it came down from brakes, brake lines, brake calipers, brake pads, all the suspension, floor pans, radiator, water pump, timing chain. I mean, just about everything. The, um, the car had like three Viper alarms out and got to the point where we were just cutting wires being like, does it still start? And it did, so we just pulled that wire the rest of the way out. and. So, I mean, we've rewired fuse panels and it's been, it's been a long trip just to get here to this point. So it's pretty incredible that we made it and, you know, no errors along the way, so. Step number two is a quick wash. First clean out your bucket, then drop in two microfiber towels. In this case, I used two older red microfiber towels because I'm gonna toss them out in the trash after this wash. Then I added a few ounces of foam and added a few extra squirts of ammo boost to the bucket to increase its overall cleaning power. Then I used the same mixture of foam and boost and let the pressure washer soak the paint for a five minute dwell time to help chew up the hidden mold. Afterwards, I agitated with a microfiber towel, not a wash mitt. To find out why and to see behind the scenes footage, be sure to subscribe to Ammo NYC Studio for play-by-play -play reviews, real-time discussions, live detailing interviews, and full-on detailing nerd info all coming very soon. After the gas door, I focused on the door jams with Ammo Plum and a soft bristle wheel brush before finishing up the rest of the paint. Next, I used Ammo Plum to clean up the used replacement rims. Then a final rinse to remove the remaining soap.
After drying the paint with a microfiber towel, I focused on the interior disaster by vacuuming first. In the trunk, I found the loudest rain guards ever. I love them. Watch me install them at the end of the video. It's hilarious. One of the many niceties of essential vac system is you can hold your hand on top of the suction and it will retract into the wall on its own, which is pretty cool. Next, I addressed the filthy plastic panels, noticed the brown coloring in the lather itself, and then on the towel. And for the tougher caked on areas, I used a scrub pad and lather gently to lift the sticky substance. On the larger areas covered in mold and dirt, I used the aerator filled with ammo lather to cover more area quickly with foam and then a scrub pad. I'll have links to all the products and tools used in this video in the description, as well as at the Ammo NYC website that has hundreds of how-to car care videos that started way back in 2012. I then repeated the same process on the back panel as well. Notice the mural on the back seat leather. Now I very gently wiped it with lather and closely watched for any fading, which luckily didn't occur. Interestingly enough, this was done by someone named Blade King, while the outside was signed by Goatee, while the window etching was signed by Tammy Zednick in 1992. Now I'm currently searching for the artists and will keep you updated if I make contact with anyone. If any of you know who this is or it looks familiar, make sure you leave a comment below. Next, I shampooed the carpets, which were extremely frail and falling out because of the heavy scrubbing. Now, normally I would simply just remove the carpets, but since the floor pans were just redone and the carpets were lightly tacked down, I didn't want to disturb its brand new placement, so I used a red handle brush, a bucket with warm water, some powder detergent to avoid heavy suds, and ammo shag for the heavy spots. I repeated the same steps on the seats, but I used a scrub pad instead of a stiff bristle brush because of the very soft, short nap and the hand drawn on ram pitcher on the headrest. Again, this was an abnormally tricky vehicle to clean. While all the carpets and the seats were drying, the real work begins by polishing the paint that in some areas has zero clear coat over the mural. So literally any mistakes will blur the lines of the artwork, rendering it some weird discolored rainbow instead of a beautiful mountainous landscape. I first polished the hood with a microfiber cutting pad, but as you can see, the clear coat is missing and it's unprotected, so the paint is bleeding into the pad, turning it blue. Obviously, this would be really bad if there was a mural on the hood, so I switched to a less aggressive and more capable at managing the paint residue foam pad. 
Look at the difference after just a few passes. Now, notice the overhead lights and how shiny they are versus the left side of the hood. Again, this hood is totally shot and needs to be repainted, but for the guys, they just need to drive across the country and get a little bit shiny and feel good about it, but they don't want to pay to have it resprayed for obvious reasons. On the very last spot of the hood, you can really see the difference right here. My point is this, think of using a polisher in its dual action as sort of a way to super clean the paint and lift all the baked on grime over the years. For the detailing nerds out there, this was a classic mow down process. On the more sensitive vertical sides of the truck which had the murals, I double checked my measurements. 13 mil is incredibly thick, indicating it had been repainted, which is fairly obvious. However, this time removing the thin or flaky clear coat would be extremely noticeable if I made a mistake, so this was very tricky and slightly stressful. For those of you paying close attention, you'll notice I switched to a microfiber finishing pad over the clear coated sides to slightly increase the cut when I was using M210 versus foam with M210, so keep that in mind. Notice the hexagrid lights behind me on the wolf face before the polish and then after. It's a huge difference. I was also able to remove the very old rusty water stains that leaked out from behind the moldings years ago. After several hours on the paint, I focused on polishing the etched glass, which I had never done before, but it desperately needed. Just to show you how much junk came off the glass, look at the pad before on the left and after on the right. Here's kind of a fun example. I left the camera in the reflection of the glass so you could see exactly how effective microfiber can be on dirty glass. After the glass, I focused on polishing all the metal with a Powerball and Flitz polish. I didn't get all the rust off because it was just too far gone, but obviously the bumpers in the front grill looked much better after two hours in total. From there, I dressed the tires with ammo mud now, which I usually do later to avoid getting grease on my hands before cleaning the windows, but these tires needed many layers because they were just so thirsty. Next was the glass. Now, I cannot express to you just how dirty and smudgy this glass was from sitting outside that long. It can't really be seen on camera. It's kind of hard to see it. So I used the multiple towel, scrub pad, and squeegee method. Step one, of course, is to spray the glass with your favorite glass cleaner, quickly agitate with a scrub pad, then wipe with your microfiber towel. Next, spray the glass again, then use a squeegee with medium downward pressure. 
Do your final wipe with a waffle weave or some other short hair towel. Again, this was super hard to capture on camera because it's glass, but I would bet that this process was the biggest before and after difference throughout the entire mural truck process. Afterwards, I added ammo moose for some interior UV protection because I knew they're going to be driving west across the country for a couple of days. Then I added ammo reflex to protect my work and the mural before the very last step and possibly my favorite, replacing the completely insane and oversized rain guards and ram charger badge. To do this, I cleaned the area first with isopropyl alcohol and applied 3M double-sided tape and put it back in the original spot that was etched into the paint. This fly seemed to be right at home in the mountains. Anyways, I thought I might be able to polish the plastic, but I didn't want to crush the brittle guard in the process from the downward pressure that I would need, so I put my hand underneath to support the weight and it came out much better. I repeated the steps on the other side, but the passenger guard was broken, so nothing like a bit of plastic adhesive to the rescue. I polished it again, and this eagle was ready for flight. Well guys, we're all done, and the Ram looks absolutely amazing. Now, I don't think I've smiled or giggled as much detailing a car in my entire life. There she is. Holy crap. Crazy. For very obvious reasons. I mean, look at this. Uh, this thing is completely insane, but why not put it on? The rest of the car is insane. Now, with respect to polishing a mural, uh, there were a few uh, technical aspects for sure, specifically because the clear coat was sort of flaking off, and that makes sense. The horizontal surfaces here and the horizontal, horizontal surfaces on the top here, they flake off uh, much faster, sooner, uh, or, or in worse condition. Why? Because the sun and obviously the heat from the engine, that clear coat is expanding and contracting, expanding and contracting. So, during that um, cool, you know, heat up and cool down process, it, it wears out over time. It's like taking a rubber band and going like this 5,000 times. Eventually, it's going to crack, brittle, and break. So that's what I saw here. Uh, so the sides are a little bit better than the top. Uh, there's certainly a whole lot of paint on here, clearly, because they painted. And then they put clear on top of it. Um, so there's a lot to work with, a lot of different things moving uh, and, and going on in this car. The interior uh, is completely destroyed the best I could, but the carpet itself is disintegrating. So really the carpet needs to be changed but i did the best i could ultimately they're coming up tomorrow uh we're going to take this thing for a little bit of a drive but uh they are going to the carlisle uh, auto show or the fairgrounds then from there they're driving from new york all the way to california so huge props to them for finding a car that was just abandoned left to rot basically was vandalized the whole nine yards they bought it for i think 600 bucks he told me and now they're driving across the country i mean that's kind of the epitome of of sort of taking something that was junk and, and turning it into someone's gold you know it's it's yeah i have a lot of respect for that so anyways if you like this video please give it a thumbs up subscribe i also have another channel called the ammo nyc studio this was the first vehicle that i actually detailed in my new studio we have a million other things going on it's not quite ready yet but there's a lot of behind the scenes live footage live feeds all this stuff that's going on i'm not quite ready yet but uh, make sure you subscribe to that uh, as always guys i really appreciate that we have a whole lot of fun stuff coming Appreciate you watching. I'll talk to you guys soon.